Hello and welcome to the weekly financial modeling tips by the Startup Station. Okay, today we're discussing pre-revenue demand. Um, it's a, a very common topic for um, a lot of founders. I get a lot of questions. And um, the issue is that, of course, it is challenging, right? It's challenging to estimate something that is not there for a few reasons that you see here. You may not yet have a product on the market. You may not have any data on customer acquisition or have very little data. There can still be some uncertainty about your business model in terms of when you're launching certain revenue streams or the pricing or some of the other components. Uh, and finally, you may not know exactly how you're going to go to market, right? You may not know how long it's going to take you to convert customers, how much it's going to cost you, what channels you're going to employ uh, at the end of the day, et cetera. And of course, this is partly. And so a lot of founders think about uh, projections as a guess, as a completely useless exercise. Uh, and it's something that doesn't really have any value, right? And so when you think about um, your financial plan in this way, of course, investors will look at your plan and they do not see things that make sense to them. They view this plan as not a credible one as well, right? And this doesn't help you in a fundraising process. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how to overcome these challenges, right? And how to create a plan which can help you and which can also help you articulate to investors what you're planning to do in a defensible fashion. So what can you do? Okay. So the first thing that you need to figure out, okay, is what conditions need to be met before your lunch, right? How much money you need to spend, where your product needs to be, et cetera. And if you notice, it doesn't really matter whether you have the product developed or not, right? Like that, that is not a condition for the model because the model is a representation of the reality and it can move in time, right? And so you can um, move it into the future when the product is developed. So what you need to figure out is just the cost and the cost you can estimate. Now, the second thing what's important for, um, uh, you know, to, to calculate your revenues is to understand pricing. Okay, and here you will need to consider your market positioning, right? Like how you compare it to competition, are you in the bottom, are you in the top, somewhere in the middle? Uh, what is your cost structure? Uh, so that you are making at least the industry margins, right? Or better and creating a sustainable business long term. And of course, you need to consider promotions. Do you have a free trial? Do you have discounts? Do you have other promotions? Et cetera. Now, the uh, third step, okay, and this is a, a difficult one, is to determine your go-to-market strategy, right? And so if you haven't done it before, this is your challenge. And this is actually one of the three reasons defined by entrepreneur uh, as um, the key to you not being able to raise money, right? Because if you don't know how you're going to go to market, then how are you going to generate demand? Then how are you going to generate revenues? And investors have no way of knowing of how you actually going to meet the numbers that you're presenting to them. So what do you do here, right? You research competition, okay, based on what you research, and you can also talk to your advisory board or some marketing professionals, you select your marketing channels. It can be things like digital advertising or influencers. It can also be Salesforce. And then you formulate assumptions for each channel, as well as the overall marketing budget. And if you are um, selling B2B, this will be your a budget for the sales force, for example. So if you notice here, right, we don't really care if you have any data, okay? Because what we're doing is we're creating a plan, okay? And the plan is based on two things. It's based on some of the market feedback, such as what does the competition do, right? What are similar companies in your stage do? How do they bring your product to market, right? So it's based on that market as well as it's based on your strategy so when you're selecting marketing channels when you're deciding to use salesforce right you set the strategy which is specific to your company and your um, business goals in terms of how you're going to bring a uh, product to market so the fact that you don't have any data isn't relevant here because it's a plan right so where does the difficulty with uh, the data comes in is when you actually formulating assumptions, right? However, the good news is that for marketing channels, 
right? You can just take the industry norm because it's not specific to the product, it's specific to the channel. There's tons of data available online, which can be used as an estimate. And this will be your initial assumption. So if you have no data or you have very little data, right? You can use this assumption as whatever is accepted by the market. Then when you begin executing and you get your own data, you will then understand how you are fearing compared to what the norm is. If you're significantly worse, the strategy just isn't performing for you and you need to make some changes. If you're doing better, then this is great. Okay, and the last step to the process in order to um, figure out what your revenues are, right, and what your demand is, is to create business logic. Right, and so what does do I mean by that is I mean formulas and additional assumptions which describe what happens after you generate leads from go to market strategies. Right, so let's say that you've selected your strategies, right, and you said, okay, from digital marketing with this budget, I get this many leads, from content marketing, I get this many leads, whatever, whatever you decide. Right, then what happens to them? Do they go to a free trial? Then what conversion rate do you use if you have a subscription model? Do they, um, you know, if, if they come to the marketplace, what percentage of them purchases something, right? So it, it's specific to whatever your business model is. You ask the questions in terms of the user flow, what happens after you get them to the site? So what you do here is you follow the user journey, right? And you ask yourself specific questions of what happens, right? When they come to your site or they download an app or they um, do whatever action you expect them to do from your go-to-market strategies. Like what happens next and at which point you get hit and you model each of those uh, decision points and steps. Right, that is what creates formulas and additional assumptions. And this is basically it. So as you see, what we did here is we took your business plan, right? And then we converted it into a financial plan. And we were able, because we weren't trying to guess anything and we used logic, strategy or market norms to get around the fact that you don't have any data available, we solved a lot of the challenges that you have because you don't yet have any real data. And what you got as a result is a baseline, right? That you can use for execution and that you can present to investors as uh, uh, an evidence of what you're planning to do. So here we go. If you like this video, please like it and share with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more very useful financial modeling tips every week. And if you'd like to take our free masterclass, Build Credible Financials for your venture, the link is in the description. We're also present on social media. So look at the links in the description, follow us everywhere, and we will be able to help you take your startup to the stars. Thanks so much, and I will see you next week.